All right, folks, so to start out with for the head, we're gonna go over some of the superficial muscles, uh, muscles of facial expression, and then we'll move on to some of the other muscles, uh, muscles of mastication, and just kind of work from there. So to start out with, we're looking at the bovine here, and the most superficial muscle that you're gonna first encounter is this kind of sheet of muscle that you see right here, and that's gonna be the cutaneous fasciae muscle. The cutaneous fasciae muscle, along with the cutaneous colli muscle, is what makes up the platysma muscle. If we reflect that cutaneous fasciae muscle, now we can see some of the underlying structures, including this muscle here that's attaching to the mandible, and that's going to be the sternomandibularis muscle. We also see this muscle right here that's going from the zygomatic arch down to the commissure of the lip that's going to be the zygomaticus muscle. Deep to this cutaneous fasciae muscle and just ventral to the zygomaticus is this muscle right here. That's the muscle of the cheek, AKA the buccinator muscle. If we look on the ventral aspect of that buccinator muscle, we will see this muscle with longitudinally oriented fibers. This is the depressor labii inferioris muscle. Coming back up to the dorsal aspect, we will see this first muscle right here. That's going to be the depressor labii superioris muscle. So that's one of these muscles that's unique to bovine in this section. We also have this kind of pie-shaped or triangular-shaped muscle right in the middle here. That's the caninus muscle. And finally, the most dorsal of these muscles is going to be this strap of muscle right here, which is the levator labii superioris. Over top of those, we have this thin sheet of muscle, and its fibers would be oriented obliquely like this. This muscle you see right here is the levator nasolabialis muscle. So the levator nasolabialis actually usually covers all three of these other muscles. If we look at the ventral aspect of the orbit, we see this very large, robust muscle in the bovine. That's the malaris muscle. As we continue to work our way caudally here, we have this very large kind of cheek muscle right here. That's the masseter muscle, mass eater, masseter muscle. Okay. Now let's talk a little bit about some of the muscles of the ear. This muscle would be traversing down over top of the parotid salivary gland. So that would be the parotido auricularis muscle. We have this muscle, which is coming from the zygomatic arch to the auricle. So that's the zygomatico auricularis. This muscle coming from the zygomatic arch to the scutiform cartilage, that's the zygomatico scutularis. This muscle running from the frontal bone back to the scutiform cartilage, the zygomatico, or I'm sorry, frontoscutularis muscle. On the dorsal aspect, we have these kind of transversely oriented muscle fibers from the scutiform cartilage over here towards the median rafe. That is the interscutularis. Finally, we have some of these caudal auricular muscles namely this one here that's coming from the nuchal ligament towards the scutiform cartilage, so that would be the cervico scutularis. We're gonna use this other head to see a couple of these as well. Again, looking at the dorsal and caudal aspect of the skull, now we see two nice strap muscles that are gonna be going right to the auricular cartilage here. Those are the cervico-auricularis muscles. Okay, since we now have this deep side of the head here, let's look at a couple other muscles that are deep in here now that the mandible has been removed. So here we can see this chunk of muscle that would have been covering the vast majority of this area, and it's also the muscle that would have been attaching to the pterygoid fossa on the medial aspect of the mandible. 
This is the medial pterygoid muscle. We also have this muscle here, which has opposite oriented muscle fibers, this bright shiny tendon that would be attaching up to the area of the pterygoid fovea right here. That is the lateral pterygoid muscle. Next, since we have the bovine, we can also see right here the caudal belly of the digastricus muscle, the intermediate tendon of the digastricus, and the rostral belly of the digastricus muscle. Right next to the digastricus is going to be a muscle that's kind of piriform or triangular in shape, and it's coming down to the hyoid apparatus. So this muscle, just caudal to the digastricus and the bovine, is the stylohyoideus muscle. Here the parotid salivary gland has been removed, so that would have been in this area here. We see this structure back here, which is the mandibular salivary gland. And finally, right here, we have a mandibular lymph node. A couple other muscles that we can see in this region include, well, it's kind of been removed here, but this muscle right here that would have been in, attaching to the medial aspect of the mandible, that's the mylohyoideus muscle. It's been incised and reflected, allowing you to see the styloglossus muscle coming from the stylohyoid bone into the tongue. And then these muscle fibers deep to the stylohyoideus right here is the hyoglossus muscle. The only other muscle that we haven't mentioned, muscle of mastication, would be this muscle that's kind of shredded here because we removed the mandible on this side. But this muscle is within the temporal fossa. So this is the temporalis muscle. Let's switch over to the medial aspect of the head. Here we're gonna look at some of the palate and pharyngeal muscles. First, we see this muscle right here that's moving from a dorsal to ventral orientation. That is the levator villi palatini muscle. This muscle just lateral to it that is originating from the soft palate and moving into the pharynx is the palatopharyngeus muscle. Just lateral to the palatopharyngeus muscle is this muscle right here that's originating from the pterygoid bone or the pterygoid hamulus. That is the pterygopharyngeus muscle. Finally, we see this muscle that's oriented very similarly to the levator villi. This is the tensor villi palatini muscle. A few other structures and muscles we can see here include the longus capitis muscle. And just lateral to that is a short little muscle that is going from the muscular tubercle to the atlas, and that's going to be the rectus capitis ventralis muscle. This large structure right here, just caudal to the levator villi palatini, is the medial retropharyngeal lymph node. We also see the tongue, which contains the proper lingual muscles. We also see some more of that hyoglossus muscle with the lingual process of the basohyoid bone and the remainder of the basohyoid bone. Now we've moved over to the other side of the head, allowing us to see again, this is another great example, the longus capitis muscle has been removed and transected right here. This is a good view of the rectus capitis ventralis muscle. 
If we look in here, and we'll look at this on the horse, because it tends to be a little easier to open up and see on the horse, but we're looking, and a lot of the fat and the medial retropharyngeal lymph node has been removed from this region, allowing us to see this muscle right here starting or originating on the stylohyoid bone and moving into the pharynx. So that's the stylopharyngeus muscle. Just dorsal to that is a muscle that's going from the stylohyoid bone and attaching to the pericondylar process of the occipital bone. So this muscle you see right here is the occipitohyoideus. A few other structures that we can see here include a very nice pharyngeal tonsil. And as a reminder, the pharyngeal tonsil in the bovine is located on the caudal aspect of the pharyngeal septum. So this structure is the pharyngeal septum. This area back here is the pharyngeal tonsil. Here we can also see this little chestnut looking structure right in this area. And that's going to be the palatine tonsil in the bovine. And the palatine tonsil is located within this opening right here, which is the tonsillar fossa. So it's located up inside that tonsillar fossa within the area of the soft palate. A few other structures we can visualize include the fossa linguae, or that little kind of groove in the middle of the tongue. And then we have this bulge at the caudal aspect of the tongue, and that's the torus linguae. Here we can also see another little chunk of that mylohyoideus muscle right here. Just deep to the mylohyoideus is going to be the geniohyoideus muscle, the strap of muscle right here. And we can also see, if I reflect some of these proper lingual muscles, we can see this muscle that's running from the chin into the tongue, and that is going to be the genioglossus muscle. Chin to tongue, genioglossus. Chin to hyoid, geniohyoideus.